What's up, my fellow cadets? Welcome back to Tales of Arise. Colonel Ribbit at your Are you service. Just going to keep standing around or what? Sorry, I'm just getting prepped over here. Dude. I was talking. Oh, whatever, let's just get on with it. Um oh yes, we were going up there. I remember going up here, I'm like, hmm, this looks like a boss area. So, let's see if any of that is true. I mean, again, I'm just gonna avoid confrontation. Well, it's a good thing people are wearing shorts under their skirts. Armored soldiers! Some of Volron's former guards. Let's take them out quick before things get messy. Oh, glory unto Volron! Lay down your arms and no one has to get hurt. Silence! Traitors like you shall never walk free. I knew you were stubborn, but you don't have to be so damn dramatic. Leave the enemy's art to me. Nobody plays here. Be careful not to overdo it. I'm sorry. I'll do better. What's with the hole here? Is that supposed to be their hideout? It doesn't look like it's freshly dug, whatever it is. Maybe it's the entrance to a path to Cislodia. <sighs> Everything all right? Hmm? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. Let's go. Ew, what's wrong? I don't know when it happened, but we sure are hauling a lot of stuff these days. I was just thinking the exact same thing. Glad to hear I'm not the only one. We should probably clear some stuff out, like our old weapons we're not using anymore. They must be in pretty bad shape by now. No way. Those are still good as new with a little polishing. If anything, I'd say all our armor is what's weighing us down. But that armor is also still good once you fix it up. Besides, better to have too much armor than too little. You can trust me on that one. Well, what about all these dumb old antiques we're lugging around? If we sell those off, that should lighten our load. Simpletons such as yourself who can't appreciate the true worth of such things is how precious art vanishes from history. Pretty art's not gonna save you in a fight, man. Stop it, you guys! This is no time to... All I really meant to say is, 
You can tell how much we've been through by everything we're carrying around. Honestly, that's all. Oh. My deepest apologies. It appears that I may have rather overreacted. Yeah, I guess it's only natural we'd have so many souvenirs by now. I might have been out of line, too. I guess all this stuff really is a sign of how far we've come together. Yeah, every little piece is its own treasure filled with memories. You're quite the gunslinger. I have to be, in this world. Don't worry, I've got your back. Tell me, Alfin, wherever did you learn how to wield a sword? I was wondering the same thing too, actually. I'm guessing you knew how to fight before you met the Crimson Crows, right? I used to be a soldier who served a Danon master. I never saw the guy's face, but I still fought for him because he was my employer. Looking back, it wasn't all that different from being a slave. A Danon master? That must have been before the Renans brought you to Lenigus 300 years ago. You must fight using real Danon techniques then. Really? We used to have our own sword arts? There's a lot of our own history we've lost since the Renans first invaded. It's not all magic and art. I'm sure it includes things like sword styles, too. It's incredible, and also a little surreal to see those arts still survive after all this time. Not only that, but I first learned these moves while serving one ruler. Only to end up turning my sword on the ruling class altogether. Pretty ironic when you think about it. I apologize if I dredged up unfortunate memories for you. Nah, we're good. It's in the past now. All we ever did in those days was stir up trouble. You're using those skills for a good cause now. It's not all bad. I suppose this is what people mean when they say that every cloud has its silver lining. Exactly. He's using those sword skills to make the world better. Could be a lot worse. True enough. I will stop worrying about mentioning it then. Something feels odd here. Be on your guard. No wonder we couldn't manage to find them. They've been holed up here all this time, hiding. The remnants of Volron's forces. You think they were planning an ambush on Pelegian? Possibly. Then again, knowing how blind their devotion is, maybe they were just waiting. Waiting? For Volron, you mean? Even though we already defeated him? But, yes, I suppose you're right. For these guys, that would just be a technicality. They act more like worshippers than subjects. They're probably still in denial that he was overthrown in the first place. Either that, or they were biding their time until the next crown contest. Either way, their allegiance is to their lord. Who they're convinced and expectant will return. So in the meantime, they wait patiently in preparation for the day that he finally does. That's way more than just loyalty. It's no less than total subjugation. We seem to have come across something a little unusual. You've noticed it, haven't you? Notice what? I'm referring to Shion. I never thought you of all people would come to me about her. Yes, well, what concerns me has more to do with what machinations may be currently unfolding in secret on Lenigus as we make our way along this tunnel. And you're saying it's related to Shion in some way? Perhaps. She believed there was a good possibility that the Renis Alma may free her from her thorns. One would think after losing the Renis Alma, she would be more dismayed, and yet she isn't. Why? There's also the matter of the power that she inherited from. You heard what she said. She didn't know about the Maiden's power. Mere ignorance does not preclude her deep connection to the events unfolding around us. You recall when her thorns went rampant in Castle Del Faris. I've never seen dark astral energy manifest in such a way. I thought you said all Renans had dark astral energy inside of them. Correct. 
However, what Xion exhibited was far beyond what any ordinary citizen could ever possibly possess. <laughs> Let me be clear. I do not intend to cast doubt on Xion, or her motives. Nevertheless, I cannot shake the feeling that there's more to all of this than what we currently know. Do you disagree? There always is. <sighs> Now, are we done with these discussions? We should really get moving. Oh. Yeah, pretty simple map. How much do they have to steal from us to be satisfied? What's that thing's purpose, anyway? Some kind of siphon that sends the astral energy the Lord's harvest into Lenigus? Not as far as I'm aware. That said, it has become evident since the forming of the Renis Alma, as well as other recent events, that my insight may be... thin. I would, as I believe the saying goes, take what I say with a grain of salt. No, Halim. At the very least, I believe we can assume that whoever is pulling the strings behind the scenes has had this in the works for quite some time. Why is that? The people on Lenigus may have plenty of resources at their disposal, but not even they could prepare something like that in a mere month. Something of that magnitude takes considerable time, as well as a predetermined goal in mind. And what was the crown contest for? At this stage, I think it was but one step in the greater scheme we see unfolding before us. What that scheme is exactly, I haven't a clue. For now, I believe we should keep moving. The path continues. It's quite possible it will take us all the way to Cislodia. Agreed. Let's keep moving. So Xion's thorns are dark astral energy. Rinwell, are you worried about Xion? Of course I am. But I don't know how to talk to her about it. You and me both. Come to think of it, what happened to those four lights that fell from Lenigus along with the wedge? All four of them scattered in different directions. It's anyone's guess where on Dana they might have landed. I'm not entirely sure, but it seemed like those lights may have all been different elements of astral energy. So even though they're using the wedge to siphon off energy from Dana, they're shooting it back down to Dana as well? Why? I don't know. It all happened so suddenly. Hopefully it's not a sign of some new threat we'll have to deal with. But if that red woman has anything to do with the wedge, then what could that light... It's weird, isn't it? Oh? The red woman. Xion and Dohalim said they'd never seen her before Pelegian. Are you saying they're lying to us? No, it's not that I think they're lying, just... There has to be some reason for it, right? Well, one thing the two of them have in common is that they're both Renans. Okay, you two. Put a pin in it for now. I know that we're in the dark about a lot, but for now, let's focus on getting through these mountains. Yeah, of course. You know, I've played this game for a while now, and I'm still unclear as to what's going on. Whoa. I suppose we should keep moving. Well, hello. We made it to Cislodia. We need to get that bridge down somehow.
It looks like we can control it from our side. Let's take a closer look. <sighs> Are you okay, Law? Hmm? Oh, fine. Just thinking. The past is a real downer. That's why I'm focused on what's ahead of me. You? Yeah. I'm going to stay the path. As long as we're all together, I know we'll be all right. Same here. Now let's get moving. Did I fast travel yet? Jesus. Good. We can cross through here. Oh, wait, hang on. What did I find? My name is Alfin. We're not your enemies. Did you say Alfin? Slap me silly, it really is you! Forgetting someone? Renwell! Oh, glad to see you're doing okay. What are you guys doing out here? We're patrolling the realm. Never thought I'd bump into you all on my rounds, though. Heck, enough of me, though. What's going on up in the sky? Feels like the world's gonna end. That's what we're trying to figure out ourselves. And as it happens, I've got a big favor to ask. You're the OS. I inkling that's why you'd come back, as soon as I saw you in the distance. So you beat all the lords, huh? Damn, you really must be a hero. Yeah, we're a Pokemon master. I just did what I had to. So can you send anybody to help Ganeth Haros? I think we can help out. I'll hit up the other resistance groups and rustle up some support. I doubt they'll have a problem sending people once I mention it's you who's asking. Thanks. If you guys can help out, that'll give us a chance to do something about that wedge out in the ocean. Yeah, I think that's something only you guys can handle. Speaking of which, that thing's out in the middle of the ocean. How do you even plan on reaching it? By boat. We're about to go look for one. No rest for the weary, I see. Hey, what happened to that mask you used to wear? It's a long story. Let's just say I lost it. I sure never expected to run into Bregan. Cislodia's probably in good hands with him. Yeah, now we can focus on finding a ship. A boat, huh? Where are we gonna find one of those? It's not the kind of thing people just leave lying around. Especially not Renans. For an Imperial power, they never have shown much interest in maritime expansion. Still, I dare say there should be the odd small vessel here and there. All well and good, but that structure is slap bang in the middle of the ocean. A fishing boat won't cut it. Let's just try to find one that won't sink us halfway out, yeah? Not that it needs to be a huge galley like Almadria's or anything. Just as well, since we've passed, let's see, literally zero huge galleys. All I know is we have to reach that thing in the ocean. Anything that might work, I say we try it. Thanks to Bregan, it seems like Ganeth Harrow's should be in good hands, at least. I wonder who they'll send to look after things. 
It'll be someone from one of the other resistance organizations, no doubt. They could do a whole lot worse than someone like Doc. A knowledge of medicine would go a long way there. Wait, do you mean the old guy back in Calaglia? Ganeth Haros would be one hell of a trek from there. He'd have to get here first. My brother's old second-in-command, Lagiel, would be a perfect fit, too. Pity she'll probably still have her hands tied up with work in Menencia. Mahagsar will be the same story. They won't have the manpower as it is, let alone enough to start exporting it. Man, everyone's still struggling to get back on their feet, huh? Knowing Bregan, he'll probably take things into his own hands. He seems like the kind of guy who enjoys a challenge. Thinking back on it now, though, it does kind of make you realize just how many people we've gotten to know in each of the places we visited. That's true. And each and every connection we forged is priceless. Anyway, we can trust Bregan to take care of things from here. Come on, let's focus on the task at hand. It's... freezing. It's always like this in Cislodia. Menencia was most fortunate, I see. Shion, could we talk a moment? Hey, do you have time to talk? There's something I need to ask you. Of course. What's up? It's about the doll I used to have as a little girl. I gave it some more thought, and I still don't remember actually receiving it from anyone. You were so little. I don't think it's that surprising you've forgotten, is it? Yeah, but here's the thing. That doll was so old, I'm starting to think I just always had it with me from the start. I know that it's extremely unlikely, but after last time we talked, it got me thinking. Maybe... Maybe you brought the doll that child made with you to Lenegas. Oh... I couldn't be. Are you saying you didn't? <sighs> Look, logically speaking, I know it's a lot more likely that you didn't bring it with you than you did. But you can't say for sure you didn't, right? Crazier things have happened. I always thought I'd be alone, only to end up meeting you and Law and Rinwell and Kisara and Dohalim. Sometimes things happen in life that we never thought possible. You make a good point. I left everyone and everything I knew behind 300 years ago. But now, I'm not so alone anymore. Exactly. You crossed all those centuries to find all of us, so... Why can't a little doll have made the same jump, too? Right? Look, it's up to you to decide if there's any meaning behind all of this. But I choose to think there is. Yeah, I think so, too. There's something beautiful about the whole thing that simply can't be denied. Oh. I'm looking forward to breakfast. Mind if we chat a little? <sighs> What's wrong? You're looking pretty down. Hmm. Something on your mind? Yeah, you could say that. It's just, well, there's something that's been eating away at me for a long, long time. Do you mind if I share it with you? Of course not. I'm glad to listen. See, my mom and dad used to tell me I shouldn't go around casting magic. But there was one time I did, behind their backs. And when I did... Almadria showed up. Huh? I... I hated Almadria for destroying everything I loved. But what I hated most was myself. For breaking my promise to my parents. Even though I swore I'd get revenge, there was always this nagging part of me that wondered if I even had any right to do so. Rinwell, it was Almadria who killed your family. Don't torment yourself over one mistake. How can you say that when my mother and father died because of me? This may not comfort you much, but I'll say it anyway. I have a feeling your parents always knew something like that might happen. What do you mean? There was always a chance that someday 
Someone was going to find you and your family. But even knowing the risks, they still taught you magic. And there are two reasons I can think of for that. First, your talent. Second, they were hedging their bets. Huh? On what? On you, Rinwell. On how you turn out when you grew up. Sure, learning magic may invite danger, but it would have been even more dangerous to live in hiding without being able to defend yourself. They knew what they were getting themselves into when they taught you magic. And I think they did it because of how much they loved you. Because... Because my mother and father loved me. Sorry, I know I shouldn't be putting words into your parents' mouths. No, it's okay. I used to think I would have been better off if I never knew how to use magic. And if I'm really honest with myself, sometimes I still think that. But after traveling around with all of you guys, I've learned that there are things I can do with magic. That there's a point to it after all. So I'm going to keep trying. I'm gonna try and accept it as part of who I am. I want to use it to protect my friends. To protect the future of Dana. Do... Do you think that's selfish of me? Not at all. I wouldn't want it any other way with you, Rinwell. Okay, before I end the episode, um, so I did a side quest for the ranch, and, um, yeah, <laughs> you can fight with a carrot, a watering can, oh yeah, I got her this cute outfit from the ranch as well, um, prime farming issue, that actually looks like a really cool book. Pork fork. Brilliant. Oh my god. I need to give him those. Those are amazing. Holy shit. And what's hers? The farm fence. Okay. <laughs> have the privilege oh, of witnessing man. their new start together. Few things can mar such joy. What if it were you? What you okay, need? yeah. So I've, I've just been rushing around doing a bunch of side quests. There are a lot of um, quests that involve defeating something that's like level 50. I'm not quite there yet. But in the meantime, this is Colonel Ribbit signing out.